Hello, I'm Mrs. J, and um, I wanted to make a little review for the timed part of the exam. A, a, quite a few students had questions, so I thought it, it would help. Um, the timed part is 10 questions, 3 points each, so a total of 30 points. And a lot of them are just taking the derivative and then plugging in a value. So if we look at the first one, remember your rule for derivatives, because this prime means derivative. So it's saying take the derivative and plug in negative 1. When you're taking the derivative, and it's just a polynomial, we bring down the 4. So you multiply and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So 4 times the 1 that would be in front is 4 x, and when we subtract 1, we get 3. So then again, we multiply 2 times 3 is 6x. When we subtract 1, it's x to the first power, so you wouldn't have to show it. This one's a 1. 1 times 2 is 2, and then it would be x to the 0. x to the 0 is just 1, so it drops off, and then a constant goes to 0. So this would be your derivative, and then you just plug in negative 1. Let's see, this would be, let's go down. Um, negative 1 cubed would be negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4 minus 6 plus 2, which is negative 8. The next one is the same thing with the exponents, and it's a polynomial, except it's working with fractions. So if we take the derivative, because they want the derivative, that's what this prime means, and then plug in 1. 1 fourth times 12 is 3x, and when we subtract 1, we get a negative 3 fourths. And then 2 fourths um, times a negative 4 is a negative 2x. And when we subtract 1, we get 2 fourths. Or we could write that as a half. I don't know why I didn't simplify, but it doesn't matter. So you could have wrote this as a half. But when we subtract the 1, we get a negative 2 fourths or a negative 1 half. 3 fourths times 8 is 6. And subtracting 1, we get a negative 1 fourth. And then we're plugging in negative 1. Oh, sorry, this one's a positive 1. And I reduce this to the 1 half. What's nice is 1 to any power is still 1, so those are all 1s. It means we have 3 minus 2 plus 6, which is 7. Number three, um, it's a fraction, so you could use your um, quotient rule, but since there's only one term on the top and one term on the bottom, terms are bro broken up by plus and minuses, so like this one here was one, two, three terms. Since this is one term, we can rewrite it first and then take the derivative. There we go. So when you um, bring that up, it makes the negative exponent, and then you can take the derivative like we did in the other ones. Negative 2 times 27 is a negative 54x, and then we're subtracting 1, so it becomes a negative 3. 
So we have a negative 54x to the negative 3. And you can leave it written this way, or you can bring the negative back down. But that would be your derivative. And when you move it back down, it changes the exponent sign again. And then we'd plug in our 3. Three cubed is 27, so 54 divided by 27 is a negative two. And that's our basic derivative. This one here looks more complicated, but it actually is the basic derivative also once you rewrite the square root, or in this case, cubed root. A square root or a cubed root is the denominator part of the fraction. So if we had the square root of x, that would be x to the 1 half. The cubed root of x is x to the 1 third. If we had... Um, fifth root of x squared, that would be x to the two fifths. So the denominator is the radical. And remember, when it's a square root, we don't have to show the two. But if it's any other root, you do. And this one's a cubed root. So this can be rewritten. It's this. And then we just have our basic derivative because they want us to take the derivative and plug in 8. So when we take the derivative, we multiply. 1 third times 15 is 5. And then subtracting 1, we have a negative 2 thirds. And then we plug in 8. Then um, you could plug this into your calculator. It would be two. Four, it will give you five fourths. Or you could write the fraction, which is one point two five. Now, the next one, because there's more than one term on top, you can't just bring it up. If you brought it up, there's rules There's a, rules you haven't learned yet that you'd have to use. And so you have to use the quotient rule. Because, um, again, we want to take the derivative and plug in 3. The quotient rule is bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom divided by bottom squared. So when we plug this in, we do um, bottom times the derivative of the top, which is just 2x, minus the top x squared plus 3 times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. I'm moving this down so I have a little more room. So we wrote the bottom, this is the derivative of the top, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And then we just plug in 3.
And then we just plug that into our calculator. So this would be 6, 6 is 36, minus 9, 12, 24, divided by 6 squared, 36. And you'll get one third or point three repeating. When something is repeating, unless I have rounding, I prefer one third. Okay. Um, the next one, this is a product rule because we're multiplying these together. So when you take the derivative with the product rule, it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So when we take the derivative, we'd write down the first and take the derivative of the second. The derivative, this is a minus 5. Derivative of x is just 1, because 1 times 1 is 1, and then we have x to the 0. And so the derivative of negative 5 is 0, so it's only 1. Plus the second times the derivative of the first, 1 times 3 is 3x three to the 0. So this whole thing is just 3. And we plug in 4. We get 12, 16 plus or minus because this is going to be a negative 3, yeah, 13. Number 7. Given the graph, find the critical numbers. Critical numbers are where your max and your min are. It's your high and your low points. And so this is a critical number at 1. And then it decreases until I hit here at this low, which is at 4. And then the next critical number is here. So you're writing your x values of where all your high and low points are. So increases here, it starts to decrease, so a critical number at 1. It's decreasing, and then it starts to increase, so a critical number at 4. And then it increases here, it starts to decrease, critical number at 5. So when x is 1, 4, and 5, those are our critical numbers. Those are the values where y will have a max or a min. The slope of the tangent line on critical numbers. When you have a critical number, your slope of the tangent line at those, because remember the tangent line touches the curve at one spot, so it would be here, here, and here. Notice those are horizontal lines. So when you're looking for critical numbers, the slope of the tangent line is zero. The derivative is the slope of your tangent line. And if you want critical numbers, you want the slope to equal 0 because that's what gives you the horizontals. So if you take the derivative and set it equal to 0, that's another way of finding the critical numbers. So derivative finds the slope of the tangent line. If we have f of x equals 2x squared plus 12x minus 5, and we want to find the critical numbers where the tangent line is horizontal, 
Well, the critical numbers, actually, I wouldn't have to have that part. I'd only have to find, find the critical numbers because the critical numbers is where the tangent line is horizontal, which means the slope is zero because if you have a horizontal line, your slope is zero. So we take the derivative to find the slope, and then we set it equal to zero to find the critical number. So first we take the derivative. 2 times 2 is 4x to the first. And this is a 1 times 12 is 12. x to the zero drops out. And a constant also goes to zero. So then we set it equal to zero, because this would be your slope. So for x, any x value, I can tell you the slope of the tangent line by plugging it in. We want to find out what number will give us a horizontal line, so we want to set this equal to 0 and solve. Subtract the 12 and divide by 4. So there's a critical number at negative 3. Find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. Now, in this case, they're giving us the x value. To find the slope, we first take the derivative. 2 times 5, 10x to the first, minus, this would be 1 times 1 is a negative 1, and 4 goes to 0. So this is our slope. for the tangent line. Plug in 2 and we get 19. This is the slope of the tangent line when x equals 2. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, let me know.